So the Mayor's Management Report is something that goes out every year, and it's been around for years at predating Bloomberg. What Bloomberg did was make it extremely more robust, and what it is is really a series of KPIs that the city reports on things it does. You know, you could sit there and say, oh, we did X this or Y that in terms of volume of inspections or widgets we delivered or whatever it is, but you sort of have to be able to back up what you just said, and in order to do that, you need a back-end system that tells you how much you did, and that means you have to be tracking it on a regular basis. So it has this sort of cascading impact, just the very imposition of these more robust KPIs. It doesn't tell you how to solve the problem, but it tells you where the problems are, at least triggers to you where you should start asking questions, right? And then we took the next step with analytics, right, to figure out how to solve those problems that we were now able to understand through KPIs. Now. That's really sort of far afield from open data, but it's not. Open data, at least as practiced in New York City, is of a piece with our overall goal towards more effective city government. You've got technological, cultural, legal, and political hurdles involved, right? The technology part, it's just the easy part. There are companies that provide that service, like Socrata, there's open source systems like CCAN. You can find, figure out a way. I mean, if you don't even have that information in releasable form, then you've got a bigger problem than data. So if you walk into a room, if somebody says, oh, we're going to start an open data effort, and you walk into a warehouse full of boxes, then you've know, you, you got a lot bigger problems than getting an open data website up and running. right? Then legal, again, I don't think it's a big problem if you're a good lawyer. You can figure something out. Uh, most of this data is not statutorily protected. Perhaps it should be, right? And that's another conversation to have, but it's not right now. So it's really cultural and political. Those are your two big barriers, right? Um, and they're sort of tied together. Political, this stuff's really inconvenient. There are a lot of people that, that mouth transparency, right? And say, yeah, we're going to release everything we got, you know? And then politically, no, no, we're not. This is terrible. If I release our response time to this neighborhood versus this neighborhood, then we're just going to get a ton of heat from council person X or Y that's going to get in the way of us doing our job. And you know what? They're not wrong. That's true. These, the, the, those calls will occur, and they're going to they're gonna kick them off their ability to technocratically deliver that which they know how to deliver. But the answer is not to block it off. The answer is to release and explain, right? Because forcing yourself to do that really actually allows you to analyze internally just how good your processes are. So I think that's a good thing. But again, that's a political thing. And then cultural, it's sort of you know, tied to it. It's whether or not. There's just agencies that aren't used to operating that way. Uh, but at the end of the day, culturally speaking, they have to be made to understand it. there's benefit in it for you, <laughs> you know, if we put this out. It's not just a pain, right? Culturally, this isn't just a pain in the butt for you. I understand it is a pain in the butt. But there's a net gain for you if you embrace this kind of approach of transparency. Where I think a lot of people go off the rails with these kinds of projects is they dictate a set of solutions without any understanding of the on-the-ground realities of the agencies doing the work. So by virtue of the approach that we took, we were extremely, by that I mean getting not looking behind the data, looking, understanding the processes that, that were behind the data. We were also in a great position to figure out a fix, right? So at that point, because I now knew how the Department of Buildings or the Department of Sanitation or the Fire Department or whatever, the Water Department, went out and did what they did and delivered their city widget, I could figure out what the least disruptive place in the logistics chain would be to insert that insight and then have it acted on. So an example here would be the Department of Buildings, when we changed their inspection system, that was actually a lot easier than it seemed because their inspections, the way they, they route them, they get a call from 311 for X or Y, and then that 311 call is triaged by a 311 operator, and that 311 operator puts it into the building uh, information system, which is the name of the very original name for, for, their, for their own IT system. So we had to put that insight in between the three-on-one call and entry into the building identification uh, information system because that's an old mainframe system. But at that point, I just tagged every building complained of with all of these other metrics based on the algorithm that we had written, 
identifying higher or lower levels of risk, and automatically it went out to the field as a pre-populated prioritization list. Didn't change a thing. So the people in the, in the field didn't have to do anything differently, right, in order for, it, for us to now leverage what we know. When we release information and only a small number of users use that information, we've generated as a government an informational asymmetry. That's not cool, and we shouldn't be doing that, okay? We need to engage more broadly than we currently are. Even if the people to whom we are providing the, on the good end of that informational asymmetry are well-intentioned actors, right? Whether they're civic activists or private citizens or academics or educators or whatever, right? It's still not right, okay? Um, so that's a, that's a bad impact in my view. Another bad, potentially a bad impact, then the, the obvious ones, right? Like a stalker uh, or, you know, if I want to root around about X, you know, person A, B, or C, it's infinitely easier now than it ever was. And then, and then misunderstanding of the information is the other one that's big. It's just data. They're just Legos. It's not the building. You know, they're bricks. It's not the building. So somebody's got to understand the people and processes, the humanity, and, 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 you know, history um, behind those cells in the file we just put out on, you know, on our open data page, if they're really going to leverage it the right way. Because it's extremely easy to misinterpret. And I don't mean misinterpret in the sense, oh, it'll make us look bad. I mean misinterpret. You're going to make a bad decision because you didn't understand the information you were relying on. I think we need to do a much better job of helping people understand that data, which means being much more transparent from a process and people standpoint and not just a data standpoint. It's a, it, open data is a start. It's not the end.